Almighty God, we thank you this morning in Jesus' name. We worship and praise you for your faithfulness. Thank you for seeing us through from Monday till today. Thank you for the strength and the energy you give us for the exercise. Lord, we worship you once again for bringing us together here to bless our lives, to bless our hearts, to bless our families, to bless our children, and to bless us parents. Father, in advance, we thank you in Jesus' name. Even as we begin this series of Family Month, Lord, we pray that all the problems and the troubles we have in our families, you will give us what it will take to bring a solution to every one of them in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, whatever we have gone through in the past in the family, we ask you will let them cease in Jesus' name. But henceforth, we ask your presence of peace will be with us in our families, that we will experience the fullness of your joy, of your peace, and of your satisfaction. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. We pray the Spirit of the Lord will even guide us as we go through this series. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. For this morning, I'm going to read my text from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. And my topic is going to be beginning on the rock. You are beginning on the rock. Many a time... We find problems, we face challenges that, that we are not able to conquer because we are not on the rock. And this morning, I want to draw your attention that it's the rock that is going to give you what will be successful for you in that family and peaceful for you in that family. Let me read from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I read from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would know that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. They drank of that spiritual rock. Spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was who? Christ. Verse 5. But with many of them, God was not pleased, well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. So over here, we, we have the, the mention of the rock. We will understand better as we go on. But let's move on to Mark chapter 7, verse 37. Mark chapter 7, I'm reading verse number 37. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Beginning on the rock. All things done well from the beginning. That is what we just read from Mark chapter 37. F chapter 7, rather, verse 37. Everything already done well. When Christ, when God started creation, he did all things well. He called the stars to being, did all things well. And then he established the institution of marriage. That also, he did all things well. When God took the hand of Adam and brought him to his wife Eve, he did all things well. When he declared, and the man shall leave to cleave his wife, leaving his mother and father to cleave to his wife, he did all things well. All things were done very well. You know, the most important institution God gave to man to make this earth continue to exist is the institution of marriage. That is the most important one single institution that God gave to man to make sure that this earth will continue to exist, will continue to exist. Because 
without marriage, God's dream and effort from the beginning would have been useless. It, were, it would have been wasteful. Who would have dominated the earth if marriage wasn't in existence? Who would have, excuse me, <clears throat> who would have shown for the praise of God if marriage wasn't in existence? And who would have consumed or used the resources of this earth if marriage wasn't in existence, wasn't established? Today, people are fighting here and there. They don't want man and woman to marry. They are fighting here and there, wanting to destroy marriage. The other time I saw them, World Economic Forum, and you would think that they will be discussing about uh, how uh, business will move on, how governments will be able to manage their economy and uh, bring prosperity to their uh, citizens. But it wasn't that what they were discussing. They were discussing about uh, how they will be able to establish institutionalized, make sure that every government all over the world will accept what we call homosexuality. That's what they were discussing. And the representative from here in America was saying that they are facing a real challenge here in America. Brothers and sisters, let's pray. If we pray, the challenge will be even be more. And that's my prayer. Will that be your prayer? Yes. That the challenge, whatever challenge is, is, is it that they are facing will even be more and uh, severe. You want a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman. Okay, why then? Why, why shouldn't we take all the women out of the world if that be the case? And let's see if this world will be able to continue. Why can't we take then all men out of the world? Then we shall see if this world will continue. It's not possible. It's like going to the it's, it's, it's like going to the sea, and then you tell all the fish male, hey, you fish male, make sure you meet with only fish male fishes. And you female fishes meet with all just the female fishes. Will you ever get fish to eat? Immediately you finish consuming those that are there. That will be the end. That even tells you common sense. Do you know even in plants we have male, female? So that the, during pollination, uh, it happens that uh, uh, they, they fertilize themselves and, then, and they continue so that we will have food to eat. Okay, let's, let's, let's do away with every male plant. Let's do away with every female plant and leave only the male or leave only the female. Are you, are you getting some sense here? How are we going to live on earth if we do all this? And that is why you have to pray and I have to pray and God will help you and God will help me. As we move on, I have just one question to ask. Who, who meets your core longings? your core longings. Who meets it? This, when I say core longings, uh, it, it, it's, it's the common needs. The, these are your common needs. And I want to be clear here. If I say common needs, I'm not talking about the basic needs of life. That is not what it is, like oxygen, water, uh, uh, food, shelter, and whatnot. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those things uh, your heart feels and longs for or after. These are your core longings. I'm talking about what transcends ordinary food, sleep, shelter, water, oxygen. I'm talking about something that is higher and above. It comes, I mean, your heart feels for that one. These are core longings. And you know, it's an inner craving within us. Inner craving that every man on earth, every woman on earth has a feeling for. Number one, every man, every woman feels to be loved. 
Number two, every man, every woman feels to be respected. Number three, every man, every woman feels to be in safety, secu security. Number four, every man, every woman wants to have a clear path of direction, a sense of direction. Where am I going? Where will I be tomorrow? What will happen to me if I take this route? If I make the decision, what will be the end of my de decision? Every, these four things, and it doesn't matter whether you know it, whether you are working towards it, whether or consciously or unconsciously, everybody, right from bed, everybody has this. Four things that you always work towards it. You work towards it. You want to be loved. You want to be respected. You want to uh, uh, be, be safe so that nobody bully you up and down. And you want uh, to have a sense of direction. Where am I going? These needs are core longings in every heart. Now, back to my question. So, who is that person that meets these needs for you? Some pets, their pets meet it for them. Pets. They get a snake for pet. They get a lion for pet. They get a tiger for pet. They got a dog for pet. Cats meet it for them. Well, not me. Others, friends. Friends meet such for them. Even though they are not meeting, if I say they meet it, that doesn't mean they really meet it for them. No, that's not what I'm saying. But these are some of the things people have taken as those which will give them meet their call longings, the desire, the cry, and the craving of their heart. But it's, it, it's not going to work. Some is their work. Some it's money. For others, is their children. And you probably might be thinking, oh, since we are talking about a family, then obviously it's going to be husband and a wife, my, my spouse. No, it's not any of them. Not any of them. Listen, these aren't, all that I mentioned, none of them is the right answer. None of the above is the right answer. You remember that question? And they will ask you, which of the above? This one is what? None of the above. Everybody say none of the above. None of the above. Whatever I have mentioned, uh, these are just few of them that people look for. I didn't even mention the entertainment part of it. Gadgets, music, that people are get, trying to get their needs met and it will never uh, give it to you. None of them. The inner peace and satisfaction you know, or the inner longing, nobody can give. It's only Jesus Christ who can give that. That's why we are looking at the topic beginning from the rock. Beginning from the rock. I have three things to discuss with you. If time permits, we may be able to finish it. If not, we will just come back and continue. Number one, the encounter with the Prince of Peace. Number two, the everlasting preeminent prince. The everlasting preeminent prince. Number three, the enamored presence of the prince. The word enamored there. Uh, tells uh, means love. Somebody that says that is lavished with love and is ready. Is he, he actually like to love? The enamored presence of the prince will be the number three. Let's go back to number one, first one. The encounter with the prince of peace. You know the root cause. Let, let me go here. I think I have something to read to you here. Mark chapter seven, verse thirty-seven. And were beyond measure as twenty seen, he had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Hallelujah. So you see here that uh, here the Prince of Peace talking to them. 
And obviously he's telling them that I am the one, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And God has given me that authority, that power to do everything well. So that every individual, every, every husband, every wife, every spouse will have that peace, that serenity in their family. Now, the root cause of lack of peace in families is our inability to answer the question that I ask. Who meets your core longings? If you answer with any of those things that I mentioned, that's wrong. The correct answer is Christ. However, if you have never ever been with Christ, or you came to Christ and then you went back, you backslid. Let me tell you, your marriage can never be peaceful. If you get anything called peace at all, it's going to be superficial. It's not going, going to be the deep one that Christ offer. Christ can't offer you. That's why the scripture tells you, if the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall the ungodly, what shall the sinner do? Now, I'm taking it to this place. If the righteous scarcely gets peace in his family, if the saint righteous scarcely gets a satisfaction in his family. If the righteous scarcely gets love in his family, what shall the sinner, the ungodly be? What shall he, what shall he do? Obviously, he's not going to get it because it comes from all. Oh, it comes from the prince of peace only. Christ is the only one capable of satisfying our core longings. He is the only one, Jesus Christ, the only one that is able to satisfy our core longings. I read again Mark chapter 7, verse 37, Mark chapter 7, verse 37, and we're beyond measure as Tony is saying, he had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Christ made all things well. Not only when he came on earth here, in the Old Testament, Remember, Israel was dissatisfied until they drank from the rock. We will we, we'll read that later. It's in Exodus chapter 17. We'll read that later. But before they drank that water, in the camp, there was commotion. In the camp, there was chaos. In the camp, there was turmoil. In the camp, there was rebellion. In the camp, when Israel was journeying to Canaan, until the rock appeared and they drank. Today the rock will appear for you. And as you drink, there will be peace in your family. There will be peace in your soul. There will be peace in your heart. There will be peace in your life. I take one case in Luke chapter 24 verse 13. That is on the road to Amos. And let's see. Let's take these people as a case and let's take these two people as a husband and wife in a family. And they are on their way to Amos. In Luke chapter 24 verse 13. Luke chapter 24 verse 13. Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Amos. Which was from Jerusalem about three score fellows. Verse 14. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Two people, disciples. You know, that sounds like the husband and wife talking together, right? They talk and talk. And what was it? What were they talking about? They were talking about Christ. It was argument upon argument. Is that what's happening in your, in your home? It was like accusing each other uh, 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 for whatever it was. It was like blaming each other. It was like pointing fingers against themselves. And it was like holding each other's throat. This is what was going on. Look at verse 15. And it came to pass that while they communed together, 
and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Jesus, they were talking about, they were discussing about, they were conversing about, drew near, verse 16, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him, verse 17, and that he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? That is the sad part. Why are you sad over whatever it is that you are discussing? What manner of misunderstanding? Communication, misunderstanding. What manner of disagreement are you talking about? What manner of war is, is, is happening between you, my brother, my sister? What manner of strife is it going on between you and your husband that is bringing sorrow, has brought pain, has brought anguish and regret in your heart and between you? That's exactly what was going on between these two people. They thought, they talk, they disagreed, they argued until the whole thing became sad in their heart. What's going on in that family that is making you sad, making you unhappy, making your soul and your spirit weakening? It's weakening your soul and your spirit. What is it that is wearying you in your soul and in your spirit? Look at verse 18. And the, the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? <laughs> Let's stop here for a minute. So this person, Christ, asked, Okay, what's going on? Why are you arguing about yourself to the extent that uh, your heart is saddened? Man answered, Ah, are you a stranger here? Are you a stranger here? The same thing could happen. Somebody might meet you right here in the church and then will be asking my sister, looks like everything isn't okay. Looks like there is sadness in there. It's, it looks like your face is, looks so stressful. What's going on? So why are you asking this? What's going on? Did you travel? Aren't you in this church? Don't you know? Or haven't you heard how my husband treats me? How my wife treats me? Haven't you heard all these? Are you pretending not to know what is happening to me, my brother? Why are you asking all these? So these people were serious. Like They were like, ah. This is not a laughing matter. We are serious here. Is it nothing to you that we gave up everything to follow Jesus Christ? Is it nothing to you that I gave up everything to follow this man and now he is not even there? Is it nothing to you that I spent all my money to take care of this woman and now she can't even submit to me? That was what was going on between them and Jesus Christ, the answer they gave to Jesus Christ. I put all my hopes in Christ. I put all my hopes in this, my husband. I put all my hopes in this wife. But now, she is even no more. Now, you thought you married a man that will be there for you all the time. But that is not the case. They thought they had believed in a Christ that will be there for them throughout eternity, will save them, will take them out of Roman uh, rulership or reign, but that wasn't the case. And you thought uh, you've married a woman that is going to submit to you all the time throughout your year, and that is not the case, and that's why you are sad. That's why you have pain in your heart. That's why you have a uh, dissatisfaction within you. Look at verse 19, Luke chapter 24, verse 19. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. 
verse 25, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken. 26, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Jump to verse 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us? Did not, did not we feel the fire of God coming down upon our heart and bringing that kind of peace and burning all the argument and burning all the discomfort and burning all the blame and burning all the accusations and burning all the finger pointing, burning all of them. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures until Christ came? Peace wasn't between these two people. Argument, 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 argument. That is why you have to begin on the rock. Christ Jesus. He is the only one that can bring that peace into your heart, into your life into that marriage. But why were they even arguing? They were arguing because they had forgotten what Christ the rock had told them. That's exactly what Jesus told them. Oh, ye fools. Don't you know that? Didn't I tell you this, 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 and that? If they had remembered, they wouldn't be arguing themselves. My brother, why do you argue your wife? Why do you fight your wife? Why, have you, why are you sad in your heart? Why are all these things going on, my sister? Why do you resent your husband? Why is what is going on in that family going on now? It's because you forget what Christ tells you. Or you have forgotten what Christ has told you. Or the argument, the misunderstanding, and the disagreement, they have come because you've forgotten what Christ has told you. They were like, why did we? Now, after everything, when they confess that, ah, didn't our heart burn within us? Now, they realize that. Well, 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 just look at that we're fighting it on. Look at that we're arguing about. Look at that we're pointing, accusing fingers against ourselves. It was just nothing. Have you realized that at times uh, husband and wife, uh, mother and uh, uh, parent, sorry, mother and uh, children, a children and parents, after you have argued, argued, then you realize, ah, after all, what is this that we argued about? After all, what is this that we blamed ourselves for? And it was nothing. That is how they realized it when everything has gone down for them. My brother, uh, when we forget the peace giver, when we don't stand upon the rock and we forget him at all costs, we are going to argue we are going to blame, we are going to criticize, we are going to bring strife in the family. May the Lord bring peace. May the Lord speak peace. May the rock come in between us and speak peace in our families in Jesus' name. And it shall be so for you, it shall be so for me. And this church will enjoy the peace of God in every area. If your house is peaceful, if your home is peaceful, if there is peace between you and your wife, the church is peaceful. May the church of God be peaceful in Jesus' name. So, you have to have an encounter with the rock. If you are here, if you are listening to me, and you've never had any encounter with the rock, Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and you're still searching and looking. You think you can get it in money. You think you can get it in education. You think you can get it in uh, gadgets like uh, music, like uh, entertainment. You think you can get it from store, somewhere. It never falls that way. The craving of the heart, nobody no material thing can satisfy. No amount of money. You can call it billions of billions of billions. If the craving is in the heart, if the soul needs it, if it's your spirit that is longing for it, nobody can pay for it. And that is your love. You, you want to be loved. You want to be respected. And then you also want to have a clear part of direction and, uh, and, and, and other things in life. And nobody can give you that. It's only Christ Jesus who can provide you for that. Let, let me move on to point number two. Point number two, the everlasting preeminent prince. I go to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17, the everlasting preeminent prince. 
He has been there in the Old Testament because he is everlasting. And he, he towers everything. He is above everything. He is preferred above everybody. That's why he is preeminent and uh, a prince. So let's look at Exodus chapter 17. I read from verse number 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and paid in Rephidim and there was no water for the people to drink. There was no water for the people there to drink. That was a need. And I will say it was there for long and because at that time they so much needed water than any other thing. You can talk about sleep, you can talk about music, you can talk about entertainment, you can talk about money, whatever, because they can't drink money. Money is money can't quench thirst. So at that time, the very core longing in the heart was water to drink. Your own may be different. In the family. Your own may be different in your life. Your own may be food. It may be dress. It may be accommodation. It may be any other thing in this life that you're looking for. Your own may be the love you expect that you receive from other people and your husband also. It may be the respect you, re- you want to receive from other people and your wife also. And it's, it's, it's not there right now. Just as they longed for it and it wasn't there. Look at verse 2. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses. They criticized Moses and uh, they lambasted Moses and then they frustrated Moses they frustrated Moses wherefore the people they chat with Moses and said give us water that we may drink and Moses said unto them why chide ye with me wherefore do ye tempt the Lord verse 3 and the people thirsted therefore there for water and the people murmured against Moses. The people grudged against Moses and said, Wherefore is this, that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Now, how often do you murmur against your own wife? How often do you criticize your husband? How often do you complain? How often do you resent your spouse? Because of a deed in the home. Because of something you think she or he must provide and has not provided. Eh? Look, listen to those people. Listen to those people. They were like, did you bring us here to kill us? To bury us here? And at times our language just speaks like that. As we talk with our our spouses. eh? Why did you even marry me? Did you carry me from my parents' house? Just to kill me in this home? I guess it would have been better if I had stayed in my mother's house. That's the wife who was talking to the husband. Did you bring me here to cause me pain? To terrorize me, to harass me, to make me feel wretched, to kill my spirit. That is Israel chiding Moses, criticizing Moses, accusing Moses. Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? Why did you marry me from my parents to destroy my life? And it could be vice versa. It could be the man that is suffering under the, the hands of the woman. It could be the woman suffering under, the, under the, uh, the elbows of the man. It could be any of us. But you know what? If your spouse feels that way, that is very bad. It's not a good thing. If your children are feeling as if they shouldn't stay with you, they shouldn't be with you. They feel terrorized. They feel that they, 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 they are being crushed. 
that is not a good thing. If your child feels that, I wish she is not my mother. He is not my father. That's, that's what Israel was saying to Moses. Why did you, why did you bring her out from Egypt? You should have allowed us to stay there. And if your child is saying that, it's not a good thing. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. They be almost ready to kill me. They be almost ready to destroy me. See? Although Christianity is saddled with problems, with pain, with troubles, with persecutions, with agony, but it's more painful when it's coming from the spouse. Am I right? When it's coming from the person that is supposed to love me, the person that's supposed to appreciate me, you know, Israel was supposed to appreciate Moses, if anything at all. They cried to God. God used Moses to bring them out of their bondage, out of the the oppression they were going through. Now they were out. They couldn't appreciate Moses. Moses, who delivered them out of their bondage, they couldn't appreciate Moses. They weren't appreciative enough. When, when the trouble, when the persecution, when the pain is coming from the partner, it's more painful. You see, Israel was like a bug. Do you know bed bugs? You know bed bugs, right? Israel was like a bug in the clothes of Moses. That is the evil part of it. And you have a bug husband. You have a bug wife at home. You are in trouble. Because you can't divorce, you can't push her out because you're a Christian. <laughs> you, can't, you can't divorce him, you can't push him out because you're a Christian and it's right there. And it's sucking, sucking life out of you, sucking blood out of you. That is a bug in the family. And I pray that there will be no bugs in our homes in Jesus' name. And so the Bible says, Moses cried, he cried, he wept, he saw before the Lord. Is your husband crying? I hope if he will cry at all, it has to be crying for the children's success, crying for the children's prosperity, crying for the children's academics, crying for something that will increase and grow the family. But if your husband is going to cry and is crying because of the pain that you are causing in the heart, if your wife is going to cry before the Lord and is going to be because you are causing pain in her heart, that is not a good thing. Repentance is required from us. A change is required from us. And Moses said, these people are ready to stone me. Maybe you don't have stone in your hands, but you have words in your mouth that you throw as like stones. And are you not already throwing stones at your wife and throwing stones at your husband? You say, well, I don't throw stones out of my mouth. How about the text messages? Can we, can we flip through the text messages that you send to your husband, send to your wife, send to your spouse? Are all of them okay? Oh, I don't do that. How about emails? Don't you send emails? How about this new technology called Telegram? Don't you send through Telegram? Throwing stones. If you are not careful, your stone can kill your spouse. You heard Moses. They be ready to do what? To stone me. The man that brought you out of shame, you want to stone him. The woman that gave you that beautiful, wonderful children, you want to stone her. You are doing what Israel wanted to do to Moses. And that is ungrateful. 
Don't allow ungratefulness to destroy the marriage. Look at verse 5. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee all the elders of Israel and thy rod. Wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go. Pay, pay attention here. Patience, patience, patience. In my language, there is this saying, Patience is the victor. Patience is who is the victor. There are so many things you have messed up in life. If you had been a little patient, you would have been a victor. But you were flawed. Why? Because of impatience. Patience, patience, patience. Listen, the problem you have now is not the first of its kind in that family. Some had happened before. Even greater ones had happened before. And your husband was able to take care of it. Your wife was able to take care of the issue. Bigger, bigger ones. So what you have now, Israel, water to drink isn't a big deal. Even parting the Red Sea, I have parted the Red Sea for you to all of you walk through a dry ground, escape from Egypt. Drinking water isn't a problem. Why do you have to complain and mama and child because of ordinary water as if I can provide you with water? So God told Moses, Moses, that rod that you used to part the Red Sea, go and take it again. Go and take it again. Let me tell you, the rod that Moses used to part the Red Sea had not gone anywhere. It was still with Moses. Now I come back to you. The wisdom your husband used to solve the problem of the past is still there. It has not gone anywhere. The knowledge your wife applied in solving the problem that came the other time is still there. It has not gone anywhere. The power your husband exercised in dealing with that difficulty is still there. It has not gone anywhere. The authority he had is still with him or with her. Why don't you have a little patience? Just have a little patience. Because if you are patient enough, that same rod. And that's what God said. God, Moses, take that same rod that you used to part the Red Sea. Take it and give those people. The anointing that flowed through him is still there. It has not gone anywhere. May the Lord give us patience in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. Verse number 6. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. The solution came through the same rod. The solution will come through the same wisdom your husband applied the other time. The solution will come through the knowledge your wife applied the other time. But what you have to have is your patience and your cool down and see what God can do. The rock. The solution came out of the rock. Your solution will come out of Christ. That family problem, the solution is coming out from Christ for you and for me. Say hallelujah. You know, after drinking that water that came out of the rock, there was peace. Nobody complained. At least, it's not, not that they didn't complain again, but at least at that time, they were satisfied. There was peace, peace rather, no uh, chaos, no turmoil, no confusion. Everything became peaceful. You see, if you allow Christ to come in and you drink him, and you drink his word, there will be peace in that family in Jesus' name. Peace will prevail in this church in Jesus' name. That is because we will allow Jesus Christ to come in. May he step into your family. May he step into your life. May he step into your marriage. And may he step and quench every burning fire that is going on right now with you in Jesus' name. Verse 7, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah. 
because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, the saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now pay attention here again. You know what? There is one thing I want you to pray against in your marriage. And that is a negative object of remembrance. What did I say? A negative object of remembrance. Pray against that. I know you understand the English. Negative object. Remembrance. Which means anything you can look at and remember a pain. Your past pain. Your past uh, 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 difficulty. Your past cry. Don't let that thing happen. And your husband, don't cause anything to be an ob- a negative object of remembrance to your wife. And wife, don't cause anything that will be a negative object of remembrance in your family. Don't try. Do you see that verse again? That, uh, the last verse, verse 7. The Bible says, and he called the name of that place, what, Massa and Meribah. Why? Because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? See, that name was given because of, of the rebellion of the children of Israel. It was, so that place has become what? A negative object for remembrance or of remembrance. Whenever they get to that place, they remember, oh, this is the place Israel did what? Accused Moses. You understand what I'm talking about now? Let me explain it more for you. Look at uh, Sodom. I tried to uh, get the real meaning of Sodom, but I don't think they have it because all they will say is, uh, a place that was destroyed because of their evil, because of their iniquity. I don't think so. But we have Sodom. Now, when you mention Sodom, Sodomy today, what comes to mind? Homosexuality. So Sodom has become what? A negative or evil object of remembrance. That immediately we mention Sodom or Sodomy, our minds, our hearts go to homosexuality. It's, an, it's a negative or evil uh, object of remembrance. And that is exactly what I am praying for you about, that it never happens like that in your life. Before I continue, I want to go back to verse 4. Look at verse 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. This, you see, this language is deep. The people were causing Moses to speak deep language here. This is a language from a man who is stressed out. This man was under duress. That is, was being pushed and forced to do something that is against his will, that he, 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 he doesn't know anything about. And of course, in fact, he doesn't even want to do. They were forcing him to do what God wouldn't want him to do. And, and I, need you to, I, need, I need to take you to... Uh, Let's do science a little bit. After all, that's why we went to school. If we don't apply them in preaching, why did, that, why, did, why did we go to school? Okay. And I'm saying this because there are many people suffering under marriage. And I don't want you to suffer under marriage. My sister, I don't want you to suffer under marriage. My sister, my brother, I don't want you to suffer under marriage. I want all of us to enjoy the peace of God in our marriage. Hippocampus. I'm talking about the brain. There is a part called hippocampus. What it does is it creates neurons. Neurogenesis. It creates neurons every time. It's creating. That is its job. And then we have amygdala. That's also a part in the brain. What it does is it stores messages, events, pictures, but in reality it stores those that are very traumatic, 
that when something traumatic happens, amygdala records it in the brain and stores it. So we're talking about memories here. Events that are very dangerous to you. Like there are some things you never forget in your life. I have one. When that, like a seven-year-old boy, and I, I saw a snake, and I chased the snake, and all of a sudden, the snake turned around and did this, hey, guy, you want to come here? Yeah, you come. And I had to run away. About seven, eight years. I can never forget. That was uh, a dangerous event. Amygdala recorded it for me, and I don't forget that. Your own may be a near-death accident. Amygdala recorded it, and you don't forget about that. It's always there. Now, there is a neurotransmitter or chemical messenger, messenger in the brain called cortisol. I know most of you know about this. Cortisol. The function of this, is it helps manage so many things in the system, in the body. One of them is helps you manage your stress. But when the stress, the pressure is too much, cortisol can't take over it. And then it floods. When it happens that way, remember hippocampus that I, uh, hippocampus that I, talked, uh, I, I mentioned to you, it shrinks to about... 28%, which means it cannot create more neurons for you to store more messages and more uh, things like that. And what happens if it's unable to create more neurons, then you receive flashbacks as a result. Because it cannot create new, uh, uh, more neurons, when you get any message, you don't have a place to do what? To stop. That's why we see some people, they say, ah, I forget this, I forget that, I forget that. You told me this, I forgot. It's not anything. Also, I'm, uh, it's because of it. That's why you can't even, can't even recognize some people. Why? It's because hippocampus has stopped its job of creating more neurons for you to store messages. So the old ones that amygdala has, that's what is coming back again. Flashback. You know that? Then you remember this, the, the, the dangerous ones that uh, amygdala has recorded, that's what will be coming back, coming back. And that's what we call flashbacks. You remember only the dangerous ones. And uh, if that continues, that is a problem. And uh, all these could be caused by stress. Stress. Pressure. You pressure your wife. You pressure your husband. You, pre you put stress upon her. Today, you may look at her that uh, there's nothing wrong. You may look at him as there is nothing wrong. But have you thought about, there are some signs you have to look at. Why is it that there, the, 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 the white hair in your wife's hair or your husband's hair is, is so rapid? That is stress. Why is it that... Uh, you, you, you are aging so fast. That is stress. If you are not sick and uh, you are aging, you, you, everybody sees you, you are maybe 60 or 50, and uh, you look like 80 years old, that is stress. And you have to do something about it so that you can live longer. When you hear somebody says that, I had the shock of my life, what my husband told me. Shock of my life, what my wife told me. If I showed you what, he, what, what she texted to me, what he texted to me, you'll be surprised. I had a shock of my life. I really, really, she had a shock of her. And that, when it accumulates and go on and go on, we normally hear, ah, she was not sicko. We didn't hear she was sicko. We didn't hear he was sicko. All of a sudden, they say he's gone. Stress is accumulating. The language of that man, Moses, tells you she was, he was under duress. He was so stressful. So, what are some of the things that you can do to be like a negative something that will be recorded in the mind of your husband or wife that he or she will not forget? If you are not careful, eh, I will break this plate and hit your head. 
if you tell your wife like that, that will go to amygdala. It's recorded. Mark. Mark it on the wall. I will spew you. you see, have you seen? I will, I, I will open your eyes and display pepper. Did you know pepper? I will spray pepper on your eyes. That one you said to your wife is going to amygdala. It's recorded. Put down these dates. Put down these dates. You will smell fire in this house. I will make you smell fire in this house. Have you seen anybody smelling fire? <laughs> in fact, I will squeeze you. I will squeeze you. Do you know me? Me, I squeeze people in the past. If you, if you are not, I will squeeze you like the man that will go for uh, honey and will squeeze honey out of the wax or the honeycomb. I will squeeze you like that. You tell your wife like this. Like, this these are terrifying words. And they get into amygdala. And it's coming back. And it's coming back. Listen, your inner longings, which are your core longings, can only be satisfied by Christ Jesus. Don't hurt your wife. Don't hurt your husband. Because a need is not met. Because Christ only can meet all such needs in our life, in our life. But it's so unfortunate. Many of us will look up to our spouses. And if they are not able to satisfy our core longings, then we are in trouble. Even some of us Christians, we join together and our hope is in our husband. Our hope is in our wives. Once we don't get what we are looking for from the Emma, our life is shattered. We just presu- presume that uh, as a partner, she will supply all of them. As a partner, he will supply all of them. But only Christ is capable of giving. It's not possible. Only Christ can give inner peace, inner joy, inner satisfaction. On the other hand, uh, others also try to do for their spouses what only Christ can do. They try to change their spouses. And it brings conflict. Right? That's an attitude, bad conduct, wayward behavior, doesn't uh, uh, stay home, doesn't help in domestic with this or that, only busybody. Hopping from here to here, from job to job. And uh, you want to change your husband. You want to change your wife. That is not something that is going to help. I remember myself. But let me tell you. Men, are you listening? There is one thing women hate. You want me to tell you? One thing women hate is a lazy man. Sister Angela, am I right? No, I'm, I said Sister Angela. Sister Angela, am I right? One thing women hate is a lazy man. It's a lazy man. So you know what? When I hurt myself some years ago and I'm not doing anything, and I will always see my wife, I will be sleeping on bed, and then I will see my wife. She will go to work. Then she will come back. At times she will still meet me on bed or maybe in the house. So one day she said, this thing is not good. Even though it's true that uh, physically it's not okay and advisable for me to do anything. But can I do anything at all at least? Since, <laughs> since I know that <laughs> uh, women hate lazy men. Because I will, I will be classified as a lazy man. Or just sleeping. So one day I said, okay, I will do this. At least I will do that. And I started doing it. You want to hear what what, what that is? Huh? (laughs) No. I have become her official driver. So every morning... (laughs) 
<laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Every morning. So this is how I planned it. Okay, we we'll all go to work. We we'll, we'll just all go to work. So I uh, we finish everything. Uh, I take her uh, in the car. I drop her off uh, at the workplace, and then I'll branch to church here. It has even helped me uh, to wake up and do other things. So I branch up to church here to do whatever I want to do, and then I'll go home later, get something to eat, and when it's uh, around 4.30, I'll go back again and bring her. And I've been doing this for for months. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I don't want to be called a lazy man. So we all started working. Hallelujah. We will work in Jesus' name. So my brother, start doing anything at all that will make your wife and she likes it. Ah. I remember. <laughs> I remember when I was... When I was travel, traveling to Ghana, she was like, oh, so who would take me to work? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it helps. You see, it brings the stress down. Because before, she would be up and down. She would be going here. And before, she would even get there and then uh, will uh, get his parking space uh, and then rush. But this time, uh, when I get there, just I drop her off. Just, just. Yeah, and she, and she goes. You know, it's not that she's going to look for a, a parking space. No, everything is easy. Ah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But what I'm saying is, let's do something to do what? To help, to bring the stress down and also to make the, the, the home a happy place for all of us to live in. Man, I'm telling you again, God, sorry, women hate the lazy man. Therefore, don't be lazy. We're going to pray here. We'll, let's stand up. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's talk to God and tell him, Lord, we have heard you. We have heard you. The rock is all that we need. The rock is something we should uh, uh, confide in. We should trust in. And as we go through this month, may Christ himself be the rock, the foundation of our family. And it's possible for you, it's possible for me. No matter what's going on in your home, no matter what's going on in your house, no matter what's going on with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with the whole family, whether, whether it's physical, it's spiritual, it's material, it's psychological, it's emotional, whatever it is, it's, 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 it's financial. The Lord is able to take care of them. That's why we have looked at him as the rock. Let's make him the rock of that marriage. Let's make him the rock of the family. Let's stand upon him. Remember what Jesus Christ said, without me, ye can do nothing. Without the rock, the marriage doesn't have any foundation. Without Christ, the marriage has no foundation. And any building that does not have any foundation, any building having no foundation is bent to be destroyed. It's bent to be crushed. It's bent to break apart and collapse. That is why, as you don't want your marriage to collapse, make sure that Christ will be the center of focus. He will be the center for attraction. Everything must be centered around Jesus Christ. And remember what we said, that you don't want to create any negative uh, 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 object of remembrance in your home. Don't do anything that your wife will remember and say, this is what my husband did to me this very day. Whenever that date comes, whenever that day comes, then your, your wife remembers something bad. Your, your husband remembers something bad. Don't create anything like that. As they did unto Moses. You don't want to do that. Pray and tell the Lord. Lord be with us. Be with this family. Take control over this family. Take control over the children. Grant us wisdom. That will help us. To always see Christ in this family. 
grant us that knowledge that we will always apply to make sure that this family is standing. All the disagreements and all the arguments on the way to Amos about Christ, about our life, about this problem, about that trouble that is coming up, we don't want them in our family. We want them to be taken away. But they could only be taken away if we allow Christ. When those two people on their way to Amos allowed Christ in, the problem was solved. The problem was solved. And when, when, Moses, when Moses spoke to the rock, the rock gave them that water of satisfaction. If you will allow Christ, you will allow the rock to come in. There is satisfaction. There is peace. There is joy. There is everything you will need. My brother, let's do everything possible to avoid stress at home. Don't put more pressure, 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 pressure. Wife, don't put more pressure, pressure, pressure. My, my brother, don't put pressure, pressure, pressure because you are sharing apart. Some of the internal uh, uh, tissues uh, as stress continue and continue and continue, it can end up very, very bad. That is why patience is very necessary. And I, I appeal to you that you have patience in so many of the cases that you deal with at home. Look at Israel. Israel would have exercised, if Israel would have exercised a little patience, they wouldn't have criticized the man of God. They wouldn't have criticized the man that delivered them. My sister, if you had exercised a little patience, you wouldn't accuse your husband. And my, my brother, if you have exercised a little patience, you wouldn't have accused your wife, criticized your wife, because the wisdom is still there. The rod of the rod of Moses that was used to part the Red Sea is still available. The wisdom is still there. The skill is still there. The, the knowledge is still there. The gift is still there. He can use it. She can use it at any time. But exercise a little patience at home. Exercise a little patience at home. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to promise God that you will exercise patience at home. Because most of the time, that is the, the, the troublemaker when we become impatient. Just tell God, God, I promise to be patient at home. No matter my, what my spouse will do, no matter what my, my, my husband will do, no matter what my wife will do, I am going to exercise patience. I'm going to exercise. I will let patience prevail. I will let patience prevail so that I, I will not react in a way that is going to bring any trouble, any, any, any problem, anything that the family, uh, that that will call the family into something else. A little patience, a little patience, a little patience. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Our Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you for all that we have heard. It's just the beginning. We know you have much in store for us. We pray. That what we have heard, we are going to meditate upon them and use them, apply them in our marriages so that the rock will really be the foundation of our marriages in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking that water that came out of the rock give to every family here for their satisfaction in Jesus' name. As they drink from you, this rock, this rock everlasting rock, the rock of ages that was clear for us, Lord, I am asking the love we need, the respect we need, the satisfaction we need, the joy we need, the peace we need, the sense of direction we need, Lord, bring to every one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that our neighbors will envy the joy and the love and the peace we have in our families. Other brothers and sisters around will look at our marriages, our families, and will long and say, oh, I wish my family is just like that sister. It's just like that brother. Father, make it so for us in Jesus' name. I bring our farm, our children into your hand, Lord. I pray that our children will not cause us pain. Our children will not cause us sorrow. 
the children of Israel caused pain and sorrow in the heart of Moses. To the extent Moses said, Oh, these people be ready to stone me. Father, I pray. Our children will not rebel against us in Jesus' name. That in our homes there will be peace from these children. There will be joy from these children. Father, whenever we look at these children, we will be happy and satisfied. You have given them to us in Jesus' name. I pray they will prosper. Let every child of ours, whether here or abroad, I decree prosperity in their, in their lives in Jesus' name. I decree success in their lives in Jesus' name. I decree victory in their lives in Jesus' name. Under no circumstance will the enemy turn their back down. They will rise up, and no matter how many times the enemy will try, they will rise up and defeat in Jesus' name. They will go to places we did not go. They will climb heights we were unable to climb. They will bring trophies we were not able to catch. They will bring all the crowns that we were not able to take in Jesus' name. And at, at the end, if Jesus tarries and we are here, we will look at them and we will be happy and we will be rejoicing because of these children. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Bless you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. All the